and gentlemen of the jury, your honor, and opposing counsel. My name is Elizabeth Fleischer, and along with my co-counsel, Cooper Tolman, we are proud to be defending T. Barry Olson against the charge of murder in the third degree. Now, <clears throat> we are also happy to invite Sandy Wilbur to have testimony to help prove that our side of the story is the real story. We are also happy to welcome the prosecution witnesses, Officer DJ Motes and Danny Jameson. The defense feels great sympathy towards Danny Jameson for the loss of her mother, though we stand by Miss Olson's plea of not guilty of that. <clears throat> Throughout the trial, the prosecution will try to prove that our client, T. Barry Olson, is guilty of murdering Therese Jameson with malice and a complete disregard for Therese's well-being. As a jury, to rule that she is guilty of this, you must be certain, without a doubt, that our client is guilty. If you, are any, if you have any apprehension as to whether or not she did kill her, you must rule not guilty. Though, through the trial, you will learn that she is, indeed, without a doubt, not guilty. The facts are these. On November 20th, 2004, our client, T. Barry Olson, was sitting with her Prime Cuts meat deliverer, uh, Sandy Wilbur, uh, having a cup, cup, cup of coffee. Uh, Sandy had just finished dropping off the... Uh, monthly Terrible Tower Cafe's meat order. When uh, disgruntled and recently unemployed Therese Jameson walked in to beg for her job back. Seeing as this was a delicate matter, our client invited Miss uh, Jameson to the back of the cafe to discuss this matter further. Sadly, our client could not rehire Therese, for Therese, uh, her replacement had already re been hired and Teresa's punctuality was less than ideal, as you will see with our evidence of Teresa's work calendar. Uh, Teresa realized that without her job, she would be back into the homeless shelter with her daughter, Danny, her daughter Danny. This made her naturally very upset. She did not want to go for, forego further embarrassment, so she asked if she could exit through the back alley of the Terrible Tower Cafe as to avoid Miss Wilbur seeing Teresa severely upset. Our, being a caring person, our client complied. After Therese left, our client went back to the front of the sitting area to finish her conversation with Miss Sandy Wilbur. After she finished the cup of coffee, she collected the trash from the Terrible Tower, tower Cafe to put into the dumpster. Between the time that she finished her cup of coffee with uh, Miss Sandy Wilbur and she collected the trash, sadly, Miss Therese Jameson was murdered. After the cup of coffee, she went back out into the alleyway to throw out her trash. She noticed a brick from her facade had fallen off. Now, uh, the fact is that 20 bricks from the facade uh, fall off monthly and our client throws them out. So you can see as to why this mundane task did not come into her mind when she saw a dead corpse. But we'll get to that later. So she was throwing out the brick. She saw Danny Jameson barreling down the alleyway, screaming at her. Now, Danny is an admittedly troubled teen. She has a record of stealing and fighting. You will see that in the Circle of Hope incident report that we will submit later. So, Danny is screaming at her, and Danny also has a warped idea that our client is to blame for all of her misfortunes. So, and she also told our client that if she had the chance to get even with our client, she would. Believing that Danny was angry that our client did not rehire Therese, she ran, uh, our client ran into the cafe and locked the door behind her, scared of a physical confrontation. Danny then left and uh, got Officer Motes to come down. Officer Motes then banged on the door and asked that our client open up. Now, when you see a letter written by our client to Officer Motes' supervisor complaining that he was not doing his duties to in the line of in his line of duty, he was not doing his, is not performing well. He, um, he, they were not very good friends. So obviously, he was less than friendly towards her. He then asked her where the whereabouts of Therese Jameson were. Our client, only knowing that Therese had left out the back door and that was it, told Officer Motes the truth, which was just that. Later, Officer Motes came banging on the cafe's door again, asking or rather demanding, that our client come out to the dumpster of the Terrible Tower Cafe. Once come out, she was forced to identify the body of Therese Jameson. Shocked and rattled that she was forced to see this monstrosity, our client was saddled, saddened 
and admittedly rattled that she saw the corpse of an ex-employee. To prove to you that this story is the real story, we have two witnesses secured for you. One is Sandy Wilbur. Sandy is a meat delivery for Prime Cuts Meat Company. She will prove once and for all that there is no reason that there was any motive for Therese to kill, for, sorry, for T-Berry to kill Therese for horse meat in her burgers. So she will also prove that there was no conference, no uh, fight between uh, Therese Jameson and T-Berry Olsen because she was the one in the cafe. So if there was any loud noises, fighting, or yelling, she would have heard it. She also is here to tell us a, a little bit about T. Barry Olson. We also have T. Barry Olson who will give her account of the day and, for and forego once and for all the rumors that there is horse meat in her all beef burgers, which we will get to later. Ladies and gentlemen, this is simply a misunderstanding. A case where an innocent woman is accused of murder, of and her motive is a rumor from an employee who was just who is begrun <laughs> just disgruntled and was afraid of losing her job. Ladies and gentlemen, our client is simply not guilty. And when she is further accused of being guilty of this, just know that these two witnesses are biased and have no proof. Thank you. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to uh, object and contest the definition brought, up, brought upon court and the jury by the uh, defense, stating, and I quote, if you have any doubt you must say and vote not guilty. And I would simply like to read the definition uh, brought in the jury, official jury instructions. A defendant in a criminal action is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And this presumption places upon the Commonwealth the burden of proving the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This does not mean that no possible doubt must exist, because some doubt will always exist. That is all. Duly noted. I'm sorry, I meant to say reasonable doubt. But if you have a doubt as to whether she wanted to kill him, you must vote not guilty. Okay, Councilor Reed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will be giving very specific instructions to the jury before they, they come to their decision. But just recognize the fact that reasonable doubt will be defined for you again. 